here that we are going to be recording this webinar. Um, so we've got speakers on either end of the table. So just so you guys are aware, um, I think the intent of that is to also put this on the Water Protection Center website so folks that couldn't make it to the workshop will be able to hear um, at least the information and get that information as well. Um, if you have Has any joined the meeting. Please let me know. I would appreciate it. And I was going to do introductions, but we do have a, a pretty large group here and online. So um, I, I, you guys hopefully all signed in, and I've got some RSVPs from the webinar portion, so I can log in here as well. Um, but again, thank you all for coming. Um, So my name is uh, Ruben Zeran. I'm the uh, Executive Director with the Arizona Water Protection Fund. I've been with the program for about uh, two months now. Um, getting back to that, Morris uh, Smith uh, has joined I, the meeting. Uh, prior to that, I, I did work as a program, a project manager for the Water Protection Fund about 10 years ago. Scott with the program. has joined the meeting. Um, again, I'm happy to be here. Thank you all for showing up today. There's a bit of an echo. This is Kelly. I'm not sure where it's coming from, but we can hear somebody else as well. Okay. Yeah, we're trying to, to get that taken care of. All right. Okay. Thank you, Teresa. So I was having some issues with my mouse to what the pointer. It's not really working the way I'm hoping to. I see it's effective. <laughs> okay, so bear with me. The slides are running a little bit slow today. They might be jumping around. But um, anyways, so the, the purpose of this program um, is the Water Protection Fund is a state competitive grant program that provides funding for the development and implementation of measures that will protect water of sufficient quality and quantity to maintain, enhance, and restore river and riparian resources, including projects that benefit fish and wildlife that are dependent on these resources. And this uh, definition comes specifically from statute. And as I'm going through the webinar, I'll be referencing back to the statement, but I did want to read it so you guys are aware of kind of what the context of this program is. So some program objectives overall. Uh, the program intends to provide measurable benefits to water resources of Arizona through broad-based local support, uh, provide positive examples uh, for other types of projects that might be occurring here in Arizona. Uh, to advance the field of water conservation knowledge in Arizona, and also to increase public awareness on the function and the values um, that riparian areas play to the state of Arizona. So some fundamental principles of the project, of the program. Um, projects, again, should reflect a bottom-up rather than a top-down approach to river and riparian restoration. Uh, the Water Protection Fund does support locally local solutions that are proposed, again, from members of the public, rather than having the state dictate which areas are um, in need of restoration or priority for the state. We'll let the, the local um, public make those determinations. Uh, the Water Protection Fund Commission's priority is to put on the Sorry. Has joined the meeting. Kelly has joined the meeting. Okay. So again, with that, the majority of the funds for this program are actually earmarked for capital type projects, and I'll be going into those those different types of projects as we move forward. So again, I did mention the commission. I wanted to elaborate a little bit on the commission, so you so you are aware. Um, the Water Protection Fund is authorized Scott. and established. The legislature has left uh, the meeting. Commission that is appointed um, through statute that actually oversees the Water Protection Fund as a whole. Um, and going here, I know this slide's a little busy, but I did want to let you know. So the top section of this uh, slide here, we have nine voting members that are appointed, um, nine voting members of the commission that, are, that represent uh, different statutory, statutory categories. Um, they are appointed by the governor, the uh, district governing board of the multi-county uh, multi water conservation district, uh, speaker of the House of Representatives, Senate president, and intertribal council. So again, these members are appointed by those entities to serve on this commission. The, uh, the middle section there are two non-voting ex officio members of the commission. 
and that is the director of the Department of Water Resources and State Land Commissioner. And there's also two non-voting advisory members of the commission that represent the Arizona Senate and the Arizona House of Representatives. And just so you're aware, it's the, the nine members um, on top that actually make all the funding decisions for this. So all the applications that come through and get evaluated, at the end of the day, it's those voting members that will determine which projects are funded through the, through the program. Okay, a little bit on uh, project guidelines. And I think since we got most folks on the line here, um, I was gonna ask that we could probably hold all questions until the end of the webinar, just because there's a lot of folks I'm, I'm trying to manage right now. So, um, so when we get to the end of the presentation, I'll take questions and I'll be here till five o'clock. If you guys wanna stick around and talk to me after, I'm happy to do that. Um, but I think just for, for the sake of, of keeping things running smoothly, I'll go through the presentation and we'll do questions at the end. <laughs> Uh, some project guidelines, <clears throat> essentially, so if your project will meet one of these bullets here, we're, we're doing pretty well. Um, so again, does your project demonstrate direct benefits to perennial or inland rivers or streams? Does it protect or restore native riparian vegetation and habitat? Does it restore proper hydrologic conditions or functions? Does it restore proper stream geomorphology, channel characteristics, restores wetlands and backwaters? Does it improve watershed conditions? Does it protect or restore habitat needs for fish and wildlife dependent on riparian resources? Or does it decrease the negative impact of non-native species to riparian areas? So again, in the context of the projects you guys are thinking about, if your project fits under one of these categories, we're, we're doing good. So again, going to some funding categories that I mentioned earlier, the commission will be accepting applications for under three different um, categories. This year, uh, the first being capital projects, and these are essentially all your on-the-ground um, active restoration projects. Uh, projects that include the acquisition of central Arizona project water, CAP water, um, or effluent that restore or maintain river riparian systems um, are considered capital projects as well. And uh, feasibility of design studies are considered capital projects, again, if they, if they investigate the feasibility of implementing a specific capital project. And as part of those feasibility design studies, at the end, you know, we're looking at maybe having an actual restoration plan, a full out budget that's ready to go. So again, in a future funding cycle, so you have something in your hand that you can take that's ready to be implemented. Um, the second category we're looking at is research. And uh, this does and should include innovative research and data collections, which again, are related to the purposes of the fund that I mentioned in the first slide. Uh, be advised that that research projects are limited to 5% of the funds that are received in each fiscal year. And I'll touch base on that a little bit for those folks that might be interested in, um, in looking at a research project. Uh, the last category is the water conservation category. And this is measures which develop, promote, or implement programs designed to conserve water, again, for the purposes related to this program. Um, and again, this pro water conservation projects must be located outside of all um, Arizona active management area. Uh, for those not aware, we do have five active management areas in the state. I'm muting people here. Again, so as long as water conservation programs are located outside of those five AMAs, um, they can be considered. So eligibility. So any person, state agency, or political subdivision of this state may submit a request for funding from the Air Protection Fund. Eight, eight, four, eight, eight. I'm sorry. Eight. Has left the meeting. Um, one thing to note, uh, there might be some federal agencies in here or on the webinar, but I did want to let you know that, um, that federal agencies are not eligible for funding from the Water Protection Fund. Um, this was I think added into the statutes in about 2013, 2014, those statutes were actually changed. Um, so again, if, but you know, be aware that projects on federal lands are eligible. Um, and again, this is defined under ARS 452113E. So again, if you are working or planning to work with federal agencies, you're coordinating with them and have um, the authority to work with the federal agencies on that. Some requirements, uh, you must, as an applicant, have legal and physical access and authority to implement the project you are proposing. 
You must provide appropriate documentation that any water should be used. Steve has really joined the meeting. To the applicant for the stated purpose. And again, so if you have like a revegetation project, for example, and you're planning on using surface water or maybe a well or something to to irrigate that part, um, again, make sure you have the, the water rights necessary and applicable use to use those. Uh, you must demonstrate that vital partnerships, funding, access, et cetera, have been committed at the time of the application or submit letters of support with the plan to obtain these elements prior to grant awards. Again, that's one that the commission does look for during the evaluation process. Or if someone is committing funds to your project or you have access, there's at least some uh, acknowledgement that, hey, yes, we're giving, we're working with these folks to coordinate on this project and all that information is up front for the commission to look at. One thing that I will stress here on, on the very last bullet is that administrative uh, costs are, must be limited to 5% of the total uh, project implementation funds requested. Um, again, this is specific to the statute. That, not more than 5% can be used on admin. Again, so if you're looking to um, hire contractors or any other subcontracting off your agreement, those entities as well are also limited to the 5%. Again, just one thing to keep in mind is with your budget, um, if you're developing your budget for work that you have, uh, we're limited to that 5%. Something I'll be checking for, and also on um, on any I'll be adhering to that. Um, that level as well. Uh, I'm sorry for that buzz. I'm not seeing anybody make it noise here. Um, yeah. Okay, so going over some ineligible applications, and this is in accordance with state statutes. Um, water protection fund dollars cannot be used to purchase real property or conservation easement. Uh, projects outside the state of Arizona are not eligible for funding. Uh, any project that includes the planting of mesquite, tamarisk, or other non-native high uh, water use trees that consume water to a degree that is detrimental to conservation efforts is not um, applicable. Uh, remedial actions under the Comprehensive Environmental Response Compensation Liability Act, CERCLA, or the Water Quality Assurance Revolving Fund um, projects are not eligible for this. And uh, research projects with funding requests in excess of 5% of the total funds received for FY 2019. So I will let you know that um, for FY 2019, the uh, Water Protection Fund did have a, a total, um, or did receive a total $650,000, and $400,000 of that came from an appropriation from the state legislature through a Senate bill that passed last uh, last session. Um, so taking 5% of that $650,000 that came in, uh, $32,500, my math was right, $32,500 would be available um, overall for any type of research projects that, that folks are interested in. Uh, water conservation programs within the active management areas, again, like I mentioned earlier, are, will, will not be eligible again per statute. Um, other types of ineligible uh, applications in accordance with commission policy, uh, projects that are located in areas with uh, elevated um, environmental contamination are not eligible. Uh, projects that are required as a result of legal action by a regulatory agency. So, for example, if, if you're an entity that got um, had to do mitigation for something, you, we can't you can't come to the state to ask funds to do your mitigation type projects. Uh, projects that are designed to meet wastewater treatment requirements are not eligible. However, projects that create or sustain riparian habitat using treated effluent or recycled water that already meet state standards has left the meeting. Um, may be considered, again, as long as that project does meet the goals of the fund. So, um, if you guys have questions, we can talk about that later. Uh, but again, this is um, through statute that, that some of these uh, statute and commission policy that we're making that recommendation. And uh, generally, the commission does not fund groundwater recharge or recovery type projects. So we'll, we'll talk a little bit about uh, commission uh, priorities as far as the way they would look at applications and, and evaluate them. First of all, there are some priorities that were established for the commission through statute, and these are projects that provide matching money or assets of comparable value to the impact of other sources, uh, projects that provide for the continued maintenance of the portion of the river stream by the project. Uh, project 
Some other commission priorities that have been identified, and this has been um, put through uh, from public um, public input over the last program. Uh, projects that enhance or maintain river or projects that enhance, maintain, or restore river and stream riparian resources in headwater streams and watersheds that will provide in direct improvements to water quality and or increase water quantity. Uh, projects that address the greater watershed health conditions or impact on your streams through the implementation of scientific-based restoration projects. If for the purpose of water conservation projects, uh, for the applicant estimates the, increase, the, the amount of uh, savings or increasing water savings, how that Okay, so we'll jump into the uh, application content. And just so you guys are aware, everything I'm going over is, is outlined in the manual, and it's also um, has left the meeting. So it's readily available if you guys so want to reread through that. You're more than welcome to. Um, so if you do have a manual, you guys want to turn to page 12 and 13. Uh, the application must include all content on those pages. And uh, it is pretty lengthy, it is a pretty um, application packet that's required for this program. Uh, we do have some electronic forms to help get you started. Uh, we do have a cover page, a watershed map uh, to get you guys oriented with the project location. Um, we have project location, environmental contaminants information page that needs to be filled out, and also a state historic preservation office form. Um, so again, if your project does get funded, we're able to take that form and, and forward it to the State Historic Preservation Office for further consultation. It'll help them really you know, get into where your project is and, and hopefully help speed that uh, State Historic Office Preservation Office uh, timeline um, if possible. Uh, I do ask that you develop your application. Has joined the meeting. Word or some type of word format. I think Google Docs, they have some of those. Word, uh, something that I can manipulate and, and, and make uh, electronically available. Uh, again, to copy information from your scope of work into contract if it did go that, that's really helpful. And uh, do ask that, um, that the uh, application is submitted on standard eight and a half by 11 uh, pages, which is more than 10 points. Uh, again, if you do have maps, those can be larger. You just hold those up with the application. A few more things here. Um, <clears throat> please present all the information in the sequence provided in the application contents overview. That's really helpful as I'm going through and we're evaluating those, so we, have a, we can go down the list there. Uh, number six is important that whoever signs your application should be the entity that um, is able to enter your organization or your group into an agreement. Um, again, this is for your coverage to make sure that if you're applying for something that if it did go to contract that that person is aware of that and uh, also helps as we're developing contracts down the line that uh, the primary contact for that um, agreement will be. Uh, for the submission requirements, please submit one electronic copy and that can be either on a CD, um, disk, or a flash drive um, along with two hard copies uh, to the address here, uh, 1110 West Washington Street, Suite 310. And the application deadline is September 7th, 2018 at 3 o'clock p.m. <clears throat> okay, so once your, your applications are in, um, I'll kind of go over what happens to them and what we evaluate them for. So on page five and six, if you guys want to turn to those pages, um, staff will do an initial review for completeness and consistency the state statutes and commission policies. And again, this is going over the eligibility uh, section of the application. We'll screen all of them for those. Um, if they do meet the requirements and they are eligible, we'll go to the next phase, which is the staff review, according to the evaluation criteria outlined in the grant application on page eight through 10. 
Um, there's, and I'll go into those in a little bit more detail, but then again, there's a, a checklist that we go through with the applications that we do, so you guys will see exactly what you're being evaluated on with and how you some of those criteria. Uh, there is occasions where we will have outside review by other state agencies and federal agencies, and these might be the Department of Game and Fish, um, the Department of Environmental Quality, depending on the scope and, and what information's in there. If I can't answer it or somebody here in DWR staff has the answers, we will seek outside um, expertise on questions that we might have. And the last bullet here, uh, the Water Protection Fund Commissioners, again, they do receive all the applications and, and do review them. So again, they use their own, in addition to staff evaluation and comments, the commissioners you know, again have their own um, priorities. I mean, as a commission, as a, as a public body, they're able to make decisions um, based on their own um, interests, I guess, if you will. Um, again, so the, all the commissioners will review this as well, and again, take in staff's considerations, staff reviews. So we'll jump into the evaluation criteria. So for capital and water conservation type projects, um, so we'll be looking at, you know, does your project enhance or maintain river or restore river stream and riparian resources? Uh, will this project benefit fish and wildlife resources depending on those stream and riparian habitats? Uh, under feasibility, there's several bullets that I, I didn't include on here, but again, we'll look at the feasibility of the project, if it makes sense under those criteria. Um, also look if there's a monitoring component. How are you monitoring? What are you monitoring? Does it make sense for the, uh, for the scope of what you're trying to accomplish? And then other considerations. And again, these are on pages 8 through 10 if you guys want to see the details of how we're evaluating those. Um, for research projects specifically, um, again, is your research project applicable to the stated program goals? Again, going back to that first slide. Uh, does the application demonstrate the use of the scientific method? Again, we'll have some check boxes and going through there to make sure that, um, to see how that application rates out that. Uh, we would check to see if the proposal does include some form of publication as a deliverable at the end and um, a commitment to some form of public uh, presentation. Again, as I said, one of the, the, the primary goals of the program is to increase the knowledge of water conservation efforts in Arizona. So again, does your research project help us to meet that goal to, to let the public know um, what, we're, what we're finding here during our research? Uh, again, feasibility, we'll look at several criteria under the feasibility category. Um, are your research results translatable? Uh, and, Looking into that, you know, can can are you using are you building off somebody else's data, building a, a more robust data set? Can the information that you gain from your research project be used by other entities? Is it going to help others? Um, is your research going to be meaningful and useful to others? So again, we'll look at those uh, at that under several different criteria. But again, um, is it can I'm trying to think of a good word to use. Um, Again, it, how beneficial will that research be to the overall knowledge and conservation of water resources? And one thing to, to let you know, for research projects as a whole, um, we do do a screening on research to see if any similar type of research has been done. And again, a project, if a project, we find a project that research has, similar research has already been done, um, you know, we do let the commission know, and those probably don't rate as high. Because again, the, the commission is looking for innovative and newer types of, of research projects we did through this program when possible. And there are some other uh, considerations on the application manual that you can look at. Okay, getting to some general information uh, for the program. So the first two bullets are essentially refer to the, the program or the application phase of it. The rest of the bullets on this and the next slide are kind of go into if your project gets funded, these are some things you need to think about down the road and uh, just to make sure you're comfortable moving forward in that, in, that, uh, in that process. So again, there are no scope of work changes allowed during the application process. Again, to make that fair to all the applicants here, you know, somebody's changing or, hey, well, I want to reduce this, can I add this? Again, it's not fair to everyone that's applying to the program. Again, so what you guys submit for consideration um, is the project that we're going to evaluate the whole way through. Um, and you, the applicant does have the option, you guys will have the option to present to the commission. Um, I'll go with the timetable at, towards the end of the uh, presentation here, we're getting close. But again, this is an opportunity for you guys to come and sit in front of the commission and kind of make your last showcase of your project. 
you probably have about 15, 20 minutes uh, to do that, uh, depending on, on the time frame and what we're doing. We'll schedule those with the, uh, with the applicants. But again, you will have a, an opportunity to present to the commission and see them face to face and answer any questions that they might have at that time. Um, so after that, so these are just some other considerations. You know, if your project does get funded, here's some things to keep in mind. Uh, grant award notification does not authorize the expenditure of funds. Um, again, payments through our contracts, we do uh, get those going, are made on a uh, cost reimbursement basis. And the commission is not liable for any costs um, that you guys may incur prior to the execution of a contract or agreement. Um, and one thing about the cost reimbursement, so, so essentially how this works is that you know you need to be thinking about you you will need to have some type of cushion within your your agencies or something budget to go and expend the funds, do some work, and after everything's said and done, within the contract you guys can write in deliverables or reports or something and submit your your expenses again and get reimbursed for that. So that's one thing I want to let applicants know right now is that you know make sure as you're planning your project that you might have some 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 way to get forward to get start moving forward. Uh, one thing that this program does do is that we do uh, offer advances to uh, on the grant application. So again, if you are looking to advance, I think they can um, fifty thousand dollars maximum. But I got a I'm not sure it's in the, the application manual, but there's a percentage um, of the total that you can. I think it's up to twenty percent of the grant amount can be requested as advance, um, but not to exceed fifty thousand dollars. So again, sometimes some grantees need that little kickstart. This program does allow that. If you do or you would like an advance, you know, make sure you check that box. So we know um, we know that in advance going going forward. Uh, our water protection fund contracts do contain general provisions, and that is on the in the last section of your uh, grant application manual. That is a standard contract clause that we have. Um, I would recommend that you uh, work with your legal staff and read over those to make sure that, that your organization can uh, uh, acceptable, those are acceptable to your organization moving forward, um, because that will be considered as part of the contract provision. Um, and contract and agreements, they may extend up to five years. Typically, we've seen projects, you know, within a three-year time frame. Um, but again, depending on the scope and what you're doing, you know, we can extend those out through uh, approval with the commission. Um, Again, so amendments are permitted after the commission approves them. And uh, one thing that I've seen in my experience with this program um, is your, your permitting time frames. You know, people, some people think that, you know, you might be able to get all permits in six months. You know, my experience is sometimes it takes about a year to get some of those things. Um, so again, maybe looking now during the application phase, looking at well, the type of project you might need. Um, or you're planning on doing and the types of permits that might go with the State Historic Preservation Office. That's um, you know something that's required through all, for all our projects. So again, working with that office or the State Land Office or DEQ on what all interpretation permits, it might be helpful a, a conversation just to get a sense of their timeline um, reviewing you know what they require uh, as far as timeline. Uh, Long-term maintenance of the project uh, within the, the contract provisions, there's a provision that you as the applicant will maintain your your project in, for 20 years. Um, again, so if that is something you as an entity or something might have issues with, you know, if it does go to contract, we do have a section for uh, special provisions that would alter the general provision. Um, but again, the commission, again, and looking back at the statute, you know, the projects that that uh, propose a long-term maintenance of the projects that we're funding. Again, those are considerations that, that we will take into effect, but um, 20 years right now is the maintenance you know, requirement or obligation that the commission is asking for projects. <coughs> uh, you, we will need um, access for inspection, um, staff and commission. So again, as long as, as we can go there, um, inspect the project, site visits, um, we will ask that that be part of the uh, the project as a whole. Um, adequate accounting practices and record keeping is necessary. Um, if any of you have been uh, grantees, or sure, any grants that you guys work with, I mean, there's a lot of information to keep track of, a lot of um, accounting information, reporting, planning. Um, again, so being highly organized is, is makes your job and my job um, very uh, more efficient that we can keep all our records clean and uh, 
substrate there. Uh, if there are any research projects or any project or any work that's done through this program, um, we will do require submittal of that information to the program. Again, because these are being funded by state dollars, the deliverables and everything comes into essentially, um, you know, with the state and it's a public record. And again, we're trying to share that information with other conservation-minded folks around the state. Um, again, at the end of the contract period, um, you will have the opportunity to present again to the commission. So you kind of do it at the beginning. If your project gets funded, you know, we'll bring you back at the end of the project so you can relay, you know, the your status of your project and how it went directly to the commission after that. And I think that is written now into our um, into our scope of work for for applications now. So going over the grant cycle schedule, uh, we're here on the second tier here, the application workshop. Um, the next slide down, the application consultations. Uh, just if you guys aren't aware, you know, I, I am available to speak to you at, at any time. Um, if you guys did want to set up a, a such like a one-on-one -on -one meeting, I'd be happy to review any drafts of your application, your budget, um, and provide you some feedback on that. All I ask you is just call me. We'll set up a, an appointment. And if I could have at least some, something in writing from you guys, you know, draft school for work, uh, a few days in advance. If the application manual asks for a week, um, you know, I would we can get it at least a couple days, give me some time to, to, to digest it and, and provide you some mean, meaningful feedback. I'd be happy to do that. Um, I'm making myself available till the end of the month uh, to do that. So again, if you guys are, are working on those, um, my business cards, I don't know if I ran out of them, I have, have more. Um, but if you're interested in that, just let me know. I'll give you a business card and just send me an email or, or call me, and I'd be happy to talk with you on that. Um, with this program, there is a 45-day public comment period that is required by statute. So that will start uh, September 12th and go through October 26th. Um, again, copies of the cover page of the application, the map, they go out to all the counties. Uh, we will make those available on our website as well. And again, they're, it's out there for public review comment and um, we'll, we'll process those as well. Uh, next bullet down, the applicant presentation to the commission. Um, from November 6th and 7th, those are, that's the tentative date right now uh, for the presentation, depending on the number of applications that are received in this funding cycle. Um, and then the commission will select applications to be funded um, November 8th and 9th. Um, usually, I think they can probably do all the funding in one day, so if we need that the rest of that week for all the presentations, again, we'll schedule that. So any applications that come in as probably in October sometime, I'll, I'll be contacting you to set up your presentation schedule if you'd like to present to the commission. Um, I'll kind of have time slots and, you know, I'll just go down the line and if folks want to do that, we'll, we'll set you up uh, to present to the commission. Um, applicants will be notified of funding status in December. Again, after this commission meeting, we should know what projects are, are awarded funding and we'll go from there. And then I'll begin writing contracts, you know, in December, beginning of January 2019. So at that point, you might want to kind of look at your implementation time frame, maybe starting that spring. Um, again, that's going to go through legal review through our contract through your, your entity's legal review, um, working out scope of work and details and deliverables and stuff. So we'll kind of have that, that time frame. So, you know, maybe April, May of uh, 2019, 2020 might be a good time to maybe start your, your planning for your implementation of your project on the ground. With it. I know that was a lot of information kind of quickly, um, but again, I want to thank you guys for, for um, coming today, as we are just not today, and um, I guess for those of you on the phone and folks here, um, I'm, I'm happy to take any questions. I think I'm going to, just for the sake of, of keeping this a little bit contained, I'm going to take questions first from folks that are sitting in this room, um, and at that point, then, if you have questions on phone, I'll unmute your phones and we can start um, talking that way, if that's okay with everyone. Um, okay, so um, I'm open for questions. Yes. Yeah, I have a quick question. So on our detailed budget, are we allowed to put in a certain percentage for contingency, like a 10% contingency um, budget item, or is that not allowed because it's not... Yeah, that's. I try to be as specific as possible. Okay. I mean, if you want to maybe cushion some of your other tasks a little bit to kind of 
kind of meet that, you know, say it's something fifty thousand dollars, maybe you know budgeting at fifty five or so, kind of build it into your implementation rather than a separate line item. Okay. I'd recommend. One other quick question. Oh, sorry. Oh, okay. Um, just another quick question. So, what do you consider environmental contamination? I mean, are we talking about uh, the water quality on the site, or are we talking about like it's it's a contaminated site, like a brownfield yeah. type site? Yeah, I, I think I really have to see your application of what that actually means. But in general, if there's if there's known contaminants on a site. You know, I don't think the commission wants to get into that business and sure. something were to unfold, you know. Um, I was just curious. Yeah, that'd be, you know, we look at that on a case-by-case -case basis. Again, I, I probably wouldn't have the expertise. We'd look at ADEQ, maybe have their review on that. <clears throat> okay. And any, any other entities that, that might help us determine if that's something the commission wants to really go down that road. So. Okay, fair enough. Yes. Can you confirm uh, the total amount available for the grant cycle? Okay, and that's, that's been, that wasn't stated, again, in the manual, and I know I've had a lot of questions regarding that. Um, so, again, what I can tell you is that we do have $650,000 that was, you know, input into the program. Uh, the, the overall fund, the, the water protection fund, balance right now is at about 1.5 million or so un or un unencumbered dollars, so those program dollars. So that plus what came in, I mean, we're probably looking generally about $2 million in the Has fund. Has joined the meeting. The whole. Um, so that's there now. now. I can't speak for the commission on how much they're going to want to grant mm -hmm. of that. Again, and they got to think, I think, long term for staff um, availability to manage contracts. Again, if that's up to five years, you know, right before the meeting, I'll be working um, with the chair and our accounting to kind of set, you know, here's what we're projecting, here's the, the amount, and, and let the commission decide at the <laughs> funding meeting, you know, kind of how many, how much dollars they, they'd like to grant out. But again, what I can say is that right now we have about $2 million or so rolling into this grant cycle. Um, and, and we're planning so is it an all for nothing then? Like, is it, you know, um, yes, we're going to fund this um, completely or just portion, or maybe we can only yeah, my, my portions of it? My experience with it is all, it's an all or nothing type project. Um, again, considering all the other applications that we're taking bits and pieces, you know, kind of where does that go with that end? You know, well, okay. you get 20 and I get 20. And, but again, can you do your project on you know, half the funding that might be allocated to. Again, so kind of looking at that context and keeping everything straight across the board, um, you know, it, it's, you're, you're requesting funding for the entire project you're proposing. Yes. So if a project were conducted on uh, federal lands, can participation by the federal government count towards match? Uh, yes. Okay. Yep. And um, could the long-term maintenance be conducted by the federal en entity? If they're agreeing to do that, okay. um, I mean, I, I, part of like the, the letter, either the letters of support or permits or whatever you have to get, if it's like on a special use permit with the Forest Service, um, you know, we need copies of that for our files. But again, as long as that's documented in there, uh, and I just really make that clear okay. in the application. Cool. Yes, sir. Um, just, so just to clarify the question with the total amount, the, mm -hmm. but the, the, the stipulation that the research uh, uh, total amount can exceed five percent of the fund right. allocated, and that amount is six hundred fifty thousand. So right. So the way the statute's written is that any funding that's that's put brought into the program in that fiscal year, so it's yeah, it, it so it changes and can change every fiscal year. Okay. Thank you. I didn't see it on the ineligibility so I'm going to ask, uh, do you guys ever partner with um, paying for compliance if, if uh, you know, the match was taking care of the on-the-ground action? And these dollars would be used to get the, obtain the permits and clearances and stuff yeah. necessary? Yeah. Um, my experience is that we have paid for those in the past. Um, so again, if you want to include that in your budget, if there's going to be costs or you know surveys or something to include that again. That's the commission will look at those and, and let them decide if that's something they are they're wanting to to pay for. But again, if you're bringing in other dollars to do the actual work, again, those things are kind of 
balancing out and the commission will make that decision. But yes, we, we have paid for for those. And again, just make that really clear in your request and in your budget, what you're asking. Besides um, the statute that's listed, is there a statewide plan um, that one should reference? Uh, for this program? Yeah. The whole? Um, not is there a particular plan that no, not, not versus, like, puts out? No, the, the department as a whole? Um, not to my knowledge. No. Again, again, just kind of going back into what the commission's thought is that, you know, we want the local entities to be looking at local solutions and, and bringing projects from the ground up rather than, you know, the state kind of dictating, hey, you guys should be working here, okay. we want you here. So, again, kind of leaving that at the local level to, to make those, those project types. Yeah. Is there a limit on how many applications one entity has? Um, no. Yeah. 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 Fiscal years range from like fifty-one thousand all the way to three hundred and three thousand dollars. So again, there's an opportunity if um. Laura Smith has left the meeting. We're going to probably be hearing a lot about. Yeah. Okay. I didn't know if it if it quiet on their side. Okay. No, I, I have everybody muted here. So in a while, I'm going to unmute. Okay. And hope it doesn't get crazy. Okay. <laughs> Um, okay, any other questions here? Yes, sir. Question. On the administrative cost, mm -hmm. uh, 5% maximum, uh, do those have to be documented or can it be an indirect flat rate? Um, so it depends how you're going to you're gonna do that. So let's say you have um, a restoration you're going to be sending or something or finding a rate. If that's going to be $10,000, you can, you know, set for the for the applicants or the grantees cost share, you know, you can add 5%, you know, 10,000 times 5% is that amount and then add that to your re that'll be your, your total cost for for that and um, we look at that you know when payment requests come in um that's you know i make sure that whatever they're billing for hard costs you know receipts and invoices are this if they're charging five percent that it doesn't exceed five percent of that total cost so again it, i think I, I probably do it at the very end of your budget whatever it's going to take to cost implement it and then do five percent overhead administration and then add that to your tax Sure. But my question is, uh, can that just be added as a percentage? It sounds like it can. Yes. I don't have to document the time or the office supplies or things that are purchased with that 5%. Can you just add it to the 5%? Well, that's, the yeah. Well, in your application, I mean, if you're going to be charging us for if you want to line item all those, you know, the, all those things you can and add five, but I mean, at the end of the day, I mean, yeah, to whatever admin costs are going to be yeah, limited to 5%. Is that, and we can talk more if I, um, but I think as a whole, you know, kind of keep that, that general context that whatever it's going to cost me to do this and tax 5% off off of that. Again, sometimes uh, applicants I've seen, you know, use their own internal funds if they're a contractor and those are at 15 or 20% you know, overhead for them, you know, they'll pay 5% from our protection fund dollars and then cover the remaining balance out of their own internal <coughs> funds, you know, if the, if the, if the Contractor is doing that, but again, we're we're limited to that five percent by statute. Is there a limit on the time the time the project? You know, the, do you want it done within the physical year nineteen, or mm -hmm. it can go a little farther than that? Um, so, like I said, typically our, our agreements are like for three years. Mm -hmm. Again, but we we're I think right now five is kind of the max that we're promoting. Um, again, so, so you'll, you'll have some, some time. I know sometimes there's projects that you're waiting, you know, a year to get the permits, and then right. you're maybe doing one phase here or working over here while you're working on permitting over mm -hmm. here. So, again, we're, we'll be flexible, and as long as we're in, in contact and, and managing the project together in that context. Right. Um, but, yes, I mean, it's just as long as, you, as long as it takes you to, to get it done, I think it's at the end of the day. Again, we don't want a 10-year grant out there. We'll start right. any questions from others, but um, I, I probably look at, at you know five years max. Right. You know, try for three if that's not going to work. You know, we can do contract amendments to extend 
a year, and that's pretty common. Actually, the agreements I have right, right now, I have like four that are requesting one year um, or six months or one year project mm -hmm. time frame extensions, so that's pretty common. Now, I was reading through this on expenditures and payments. It looks like maybe you make payments as things are done or just at the end? Um, we can, and again, this is all during the contract, however you want to work it out. Um, again, you can have within your task, I think you'll see the way the tasks are laid out, that mm -hmm. you can you can build your tasks and reimbursement based on deliverables. So we can, during the, the, the contracting phase, I can help you work out, okay, well, we'll submit our plans, you know, caught, charge for that, and then we'll get reimbursed for that. You know, we'll do this, phase one, and then ask for reimbursement with reports, you know, documentation that's been done or invoices, receipts, and we'll reimburse you for that. So we can we can work out a schedule during the contracting process, um, but I think looking through here, as you're building your application to kind of keep that in mind, what might my cash flow be for, you know, moving forward with this? And can I, as an organization, front this much to get this done and then build that into my next phase? Again, so you kind of keep your cash flow going. Um, there is an advanced option, again, like I mentioned, to, to help kickstart um, the project if, if necessary. But one thing to keep in mind with advances is that, you know, we'll, we'll advance to 20000 or whatever it is, 20%, uh, um, and you guys have to expend that. But right at that moment, the contract goes back into a reimbursable basis. So, again, we'll help get you started, but you're still going to have to have some, some way to kind of keep yourselves uh, fluid as far as funding uh, to, to keep your work going. Yes. What's the typical turnaround time for reimbursement? Um, we have typically 30 days, I think, for the <coughs> program policy to, to make sure that reimbursements are done within or we started to get processed. We have 30 days to do that. So I got to take into account, you know, our um, finance divisions. They have, you know, like a seven to 10 day window. So usually when they come in, we're, we're trying to turn those around uh, relatively quick. Um, and again, if there's like a need to get those out quicker, you know, again, we have to go through everything, all the receipts and make sure everything works out. So again, the, the cleaner your records are, you know, everything is lined up. I can, all the math adds up. The administration costs are there. There's no questions on reports or something like that. Um, we can put those through pretty quickly. So it's, it's a matter of, you know, just developing that working relationship. We can all understand what, how you're thinking, how your accounting division is thinking different than ours. But again, it, it's, it's just from my standpoint, seeing, you know, just the different, the different ways that, that folks track things. And um, it, it just helped me to, you know, to, it, it, it's helped me in, in ways that it's really cool to do that, that you're able to, you know, work with other entities and, and figure out their accounting. Okay, I always teach you this is how it's coming out. And that helps me to be a little bit faster, too, as I'm looking at others. I can, I can help you guys out that way. Uh, any other questions in-house? In All right. Um, so I'm going to... If there's questions on the phone line, I'm going to start unmuting people. Um, if things start, and uh, if you're on the webinar itself and you want to speak, um, I think you do have a little hand button by your name that you can uh, request. Can you say something. Um, but right now, if you guys are on the phone and want to ask a question, uh, please, you're more than welcome to do so right now. Um, you guys are also welcome to contact me on the phone. Um, does anybody need business cards here? I don't know if I, I brought like 20, but we'll grab another stack before before I leave. Um, okay. Yeah, there's some up there on the chair. All right. Are there any questions from anybody um, off-site? Bushman, Nature Conservancy. Has left the meeting. Kelly. Has left the meeting. Holly Irwin with La Paz County Board of Supervisors. Has left the meeting. Holly Richter has left the meeting. Uh, has left the meeting. All right. Any other? I guess we can. We can talk to it. Has left questions? the meeting. Concerns. Um, yeah. How do you do this every year? Um, it's 
it's dependent on funding availability. Um, the commission was able to have a cycle in 2014 um, and 2015. They didn't have one in 2016, and they were, didn't have one in 2018. Okay. So again, working with, with, with funds that come in, and we can build up a, you know, get a big account to go and offer a grant cycle. That's my experience, or that's what I've seen um, you know, coming in the last couple months. Is that kind of how it's moving forward? So we're, we're dependent on uh, either appropriations or cancer donations right. to the program to do that. I was curious, oh, sorry, go ahead. Yes. Have you ever had money move back from your fund to the state budget? Uh, no, once it's on the Water Protection Fund budget, it's, that's where it is. Well, I'll, I'll take that back. Um, previous years, there were legislative sweeps that did come in. Um, okay, yeah, the, the, there, there has been some legislative funding sweeps, I think, when the, when the budget uh, issues were going on here. So yes, there was money taken from the Water Protection Fund to that. Um, that hasn't happened like, in several years. Um, I've got a, a sheet there in my office that, that shows one of those dates. I can't remember specifically, but yes, that has happened to this program. Thank you. Um, again, we're, we're kind of building back funds and moving forward as we can. Did those affect existing contracts, or that was only unobligated? Uh, unobligated dollars, my understanding, yes. So anything that gets approved and funded through this program, again, you're, you're encumbered and you have your those funding as as secure as they can be in agreement are I have a question on the public uh, comments just really quickly. Does that at all uh, enhance the competitiveness of your of your grant? If you have uh, people from the community really, you know, uh, submitting positive comments about your project, would that at all affect the commission's decision? Um, that's, I mean, the commission does look very favorably on local support for your project. Okay, cool. Um, I think that's one of the, the criteria that we look at, but it's also like in statute, you know, the commission does give priority to projects that, that have that broad base and local support. So, again, the more, if you guys get letters to the court, you know, that's more power to you to, to do that and, and make sure you include them into your, into your application. Okay. Are previous applications still posted on your website or someplace else? Um, yes, they are. We actually have final reports that are on there and, yes, um, right now if you go to the website, I think if you look under the, I mean, it might be the grants tab, um, but we do have applications that have been received at least for the last few years um, on there. So yeah, they'd be good references to kind of look at how they broke down information and what the project I know the money changes every every opportunity. Can you give us a sense of how many applications you typically get or how many projects you typically fund? Um, I have a, I have a, a, a table in my in my uh, there. Uh, I think. Probably in 2017, I think we probably had like eight or nine applications received. come and received in the previous years. Like that, it was about maybe 15. So it's been, you know, between maybe 10 and 20 over the last few fiscal years. Um, I can tell you there's been a lot of interest. And again, thank you all for being here. Um, so I guess we'll see at the end of the day how, how this year, uh, this year looks. But yeah, typically, I think with just the funding availability, um, you know, there was. Not that it wasn't interest, but I don't know if there's a lot of funding that folks, you know, out and put the time into writing an application to the, to the program. This is a contract general provisions, or those available for more Yes, those are the last few pages of your application, then. Yeah, yeah it, it's in there. It's like the last few pages, I believe. Terrible. Are there any questions? There's one of those other questions, uh, though. In the, uh, uh, a lot of these just say call in features. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, Kelly. I just saw your name come up. Oh hi! I just I just wanted to thank you, Ruben, and um, this was this covered a lot of really great information. And I will, you know, we'll be reaching back out to you individually. Um, okay. And then just one quick question: Another I know people idea, were talking too. about how frequently there was likely to be a cycle, and I wondered if every other year is looking like what we might be going forward with, or if it's if it's just not very well known. 
Um, at this point, you know, my understanding, uh, I just started here about two months ago, but uh, my understanding is that they were planning on having a year 18 grant cycle, but the at that time, and they didn't want to go and commit themselves into a grant cycle and not have anyone there to kind of keep it at the helm. So they, that's why they didn't have one last year. Um, again, so they're just rolling this into into the FY19. Um, like I said, a, okay. a lot of depending on, on funding that's coming in um, and, and how, you know, what's, what's unencumbered, projects that are closing out in the next year or two, and how that rolls out. So again, as soon as we know um, that the commission wants to roll again with another grant cycle, again, it'll be, we'll, we'll put it out there again. You, you guys will know. Great, that's helpful, thank you. And yeah, we'll be in touch and thanks so much for doing this webinar. Okay, thank you. Uh, any other questions or hands um, online? Sarissa? Thanks so much Sarissa? for the presentation, Ruben. Um, I just had two quick questions um, for you. I wanted to okay. confirm, and I'm sorry folks asked this on, um, in the room already, but for the application deadline, I'm assuming for the two hard copies, that those um, need to be postmarked by September 7th, correct? Or do they need to arrive to your office by September 7th? They need to be in our office. Everything needs to be submitted in, in my hands, I guess, by 3 o'clock on September 7th. Okay, that's good to know. Thank you so much for that. And then my second question is, um, for restoration-focused projects, are there projects in certain riparian areas that are favored over others? For example, um, in streams and rivers versus like springs, for example? Um, no, I don't think there, there's not a, uh, a hierarchy, I guess, if, if you will. Um, again, as long as you're meeting the, the goals of the fund um, or, you know, the stated purposes, you know, it's, it's up there with all the rest of them. Great. Okay. Thank you so much. Those are the only two questions I had. Thanks again for the presentation. Thank you. So I have a quick follow-up on that question about the submittal. Yes. Paper copies have to be here. The electronic versions you need on a CD or a thumb drive mm -hmm. can't be emailed. Um, right. Depending on the size. I mean, if it comes in, that's fine. I mean, what I recommend, I mean, if you can bring in or mail and everything, just stick it in there with the uh, with the application packet. So if you're going to walk it, drop it off, and you just take it all at once. Um, but if you want to email it, that's fine. Um, I, I don't know what our size limitation for receiving information is here, but probably anything over 10, 15 megs, that's really, you know, I'm not sure if that would come in. Um, but I don't know, I haven't tested the, the limits on that yet, but um, that'd be my recommendation if you just put it all as one packet and mail it and bring it in. Just asking CDs and that sort of thing are becoming less and less common. Yeah, whatever whatever digital media um, you want to submit it on, it, as long as I can access it. If not, I'll, I'll get a copy of it. Yeah. Uh, anybody, anybody else online got a question? Get any more things to flash up now? Has left the meeting. I just had a really quick sort of in the meeting question about the. Um, Jessica the Rodriguez. Has left the meeting. Requirements, mm -hmm. and specifically in the project overview, it sort of gives you know the background of all of the projects, and then it, and then it sort of says, like, okay, you know, if you're doing a project, you have a certain time. Is there any set format that you would like for a research project, or you know, is that the place to really just have a statement of the significance to the section? Yeah, just however you want to develop that. Again, I'll, I'll leave it up to you. Um, again, when I'm looking at it, I'll be looking. Are you at least meeting some of these criteria, or how do you follow these criteria? But yeah, however, however easiest or, or best for you to translate that information. To us and write it out. Um, yeah, I'm not looking for a specific form. I'll leave this on. <laughs> I'll leave that to Tierney you. Shipper has left the meeting. You yep. mentioned feasibility both in terms of uh, capital projects and mm -hmm. research, and I'm a little confused. Can you clarify? Yeah, let me, um, let me find what I was referencing here. So. So under capital water conservation, so feasibility, um, things, questions we'd be asking, you know, 
object are the objectives clearly identified and demonstrate benefits to direct benefit to stream river by printing resources? Are the methodologies and designs clearly presented? Are they appropriate and adequate for what you're proposing? Uh, looking at the clarity and adequacy of the scope of work and the deliverables, uh, the cost benefit compared to other similar type applications, uh, the expertise of the applicant, personnel, or subcontractors, uh, description of the relationship between any existing plans, reports, or information relevant to the proposed project. Um, so again, those are just other other things that you know. As I'm looking at your application, kind of keeping those in the back of my mind for evaluation purposes. Mm -hmm. I mean, so you were saying that a, a capital project. Oh, feasibility, feasibility of. Oh, design. Be a feasibility project in and of itself, right? Without actual building, do feasibility project. Under a feasibility, yeah. So it's under the capital, but the end goal is that you are looking at the feasibility of implementing Larry Stevens, a specific Capital and Museum of project. Northern Arizona. So, so, but then there was, left the meeting. Okay. was talking about research and it said something about feasibility. So research is, is a totally different, totally different. category. So not a feasibility element ever. Under the research, research. no. no. So, so yeah, Kelly? The capital feasibility has capital left the project, meeting. It's kind of like a research project. Yeah. But again, research is looking and collecting data and yeah, answering a question where you're looking at the feasibility. How feasible is it to implement this big project that we want to do? Okay. So it's, yeah. It's, it's, okay. Thank you. Any, any other questions? All right. Uh, anything else online um, while we're here? No hands? All right, everyone. Um, if that's Stay with the questions. I want to thank you all again for, for coming out. I uh, appreciate you taking the time driving up here and uh, participating online. Um, again, you should have my contact information through the email, uh, RSVP, or on the website. You guys are, again, free to con contact me at any time. Um, again, if you guys want to set up a one-on-one -on -one consultation, I'm more than happy to do that. And um, good luck to all of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Has left the meeting. Kathy Douglas. Has left the meeting. A part